<laughs> don't hit me with that. What's up, big guy? No, I want to go. Uh, I want to follow up on something we talked about the other night with Russ. Uh, you being a teammate of his, um, can you just kind of describe to us what like a normal day is with him as a teammate when you're competing on the court, and then when the game is over, does kind of his mentality change? Yeah, it's like a switch. He gonna compete. He gonna bring the energy, uh, and then all of a sudden. This switch goes off, and then he's laughing and joking. Uh, but anytime it's a it's a moment or a situation where he's going to compete, um, or he's in any level of competition, it don't matter what it is. He's going to talk trash. He's going to bring the juice. He's going to bring the energy. And uh, and then all of a sudden, as soon as he's done, like he like you know, switches it off. And like, what you better do? Better go get some meat. Like that's just you know that's that's how Russ is. Yeah. Yes, what's up, boy? What's going on? Man, I'm hanging in there. Hey, I just wonder what – you've had some experience. When you go to a, a new team, I just wonder, like, of all the things that you have to do when you are on a new team, mm -hmm. what's the most challenging? What's the hardest thing to, to kind of get right as you make that adjustment? Uh, probably – To me, for, for me, the amateurs tell you, it was just like getting used to like everything like that was new again. Mm -hmm. um, like what a practice facility is, you have to put it in your GPS, you know, the first couple of weeks. Um, you know, where you're supposed to, the cafeteria, just different little areas where you can get food from, the restaurants, just the familiarity. I'd probably say more than anything. Um, when I was making a move, I was, I was a single man, so I didn't have to worry about, you know, family or anything like that. I would just grab my stuff and be out. Uh, so, you know, that's probably something else that, you know, guys with families um, would have to worry about, just kind of commuting and getting them from, you know, one city to now to another city. So uh, I'd probably say all those things added into one, uh, just probably uh, like a sense of familiarity of a new area. So. Gotcha. Glenn. Ish, how are you, man? What's going on? Ish, last year, um, obviously this team wanted to get better defensively and, and, and just add some physicality, some dog, some toughness, some nasty to the team. With Russell coming, um, he obviously brings those things. And, how much can one guy change uh, the way a whole team plays? Well, I think Russ is going to bring the juice. He's going to bring the energy. That's just what Russ does. Uh, it's funny. Uh, I talked to Russ when it first went down. <laughs> and Russ was like, it's 1 o'clock in the morning, y'all. He calls me because it's a different time in L.A. And he's like, hey, Ish, wake up, man. What you doing? I'm like, bro, I am asleep. And he like, you, you know what I'm on? Come on. You know what kind of juice we're going to bring? And that's who Russ is. But it's on us as everybody who was here who, you know, offensively we was special, you know, and we can still get better in that level. But defensively, kind of taking the challenge on. And, yeah, Russ is going to bring the energy. Yes, he's going to bring the juice. Yes, he's going to bring the energy um, and because that's what he does. But we're going to have to look at ourselves in the mirror each – individual player and get better defensively. And that means guarding your yard. Uh, that means guarding the guy in front of you uh, and, and kind of being mad and frustrated at him scoring um, and helping the other guy. So we were here, all the guys that were here who were in the bubble, um, we know that we have to get better, uh, you know, defensively and just to kind of take that challenge on. Um, but Russ, you know, obviously he makes – He's going to bring the dog. He's going to, you know, he's going to bring the juice. He's going to bring the energy. And he's going to, you know, bring the level, of, you know, of everybody up. But we still have to look in the mirror and, and get better in those, in those areas individually. As, a, as being a veteran um, and being around as much as you have in different teams, what was your approach this summer coming back physically and, and basketball-wise? What were some of the things you, you worked on? Yeah, um, 
just improving on every aspect. Uh, last year I shot 37. You know, I want to get to 40 this year. Um, you know, defensively really taking on a challenge um, because with my speed and my quickness, um, I should, not should, I will be able to, uh, should be able to guard guys, uh, get into guys, um, you know, and, you know, you show glimpses of those things. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, you could be a little lazy in, in some areas uh, and you have to take the challenge. You, you're the head up there. Um, and, and with the second unit, you got to take that challenge on um, and guard guys, and kind of set that tone. And uh, so that that's something I want to work on, get better at. Um, and, you know, I'm bringing the pace. I'm, I'm going to play my game and, and play the way I play. But I just think um, offensively, everything, but really defensively, just really kind of taking on that challenge. The guys going to score the basketball. We, we're in a league now. Guys are shooting from freaking half court to warm up. So the guys are going to make shots, but you just want to make it hard on them and tough on them throughout, a, you know, you know, the minutes that you're out there playing. Thank you. Quentin. What's up, Ish? What's going on, man? So I asked this question to Brad. I want to get your take on it. Denny of Dia, or my dog is. I see him. Quentin, what, what do you look like? Let me see him. Come here. Tell him, go ahead and make a cameo. Come on. Hey. Here we go. A little shit, too. <laughs> but my question is, uh, what do you think about Denny of Dia? What do you think he brings to the floor? And um, you being a vet, you've been in the league a long time now. What do you think you can pour into his cup as a rookie in the league? Yeah, just I think as a rookie in the league, for me, the biggest thing, because I had great vets when I came in the league, they just kept feeding confidence in me, just kept keeping – they kept feeding confidence in me, Quentin. And that goes a long way because when you get to the league, you know you made it. You conquered the college or the overseas level, wherever you're coming from, um, level, and now you're here. And now you're back on the bottom of the totem pole. And, and now it's your job to work your way up, work your way up. But you can't work your way up without, you know, as teammates, us feeding into them, telling them, you good, you good, confidence-wise. And, and I think that's something that not only myself can do, we all can do. Uh, but he's super skilled. Dude can, like, shoot it, pass it, drive it. And, and it's funny because that is the NBA now these days. It's not one guy on the floor that can't do it all. And he's just, you know, we were blessed and lucky. Um, I don't believe in luck, but we were blessed to, you know, for him to drop to us um, because everybody said he was a, you know, a top five pick. So, um, you know, he, he's got a bright, bright future. And it's just really our job and our duty, um, you know, to really, really kind of, you know, keep feeding into him. And when your confidence is low, because it will get low. We, we're, you know, all our confidence is low. I don't care how great you are what level you're at, if this is year 10 or year, you know, you're a rookie. Um, so we have to continue to talk to him, continue to encourage him, and uh, to play the way that he knows how to play. Appreciate that, Ish. Yes, sir. Brianna? Hey, Ish, how are you? How you doing? Good, good. So you kind of gave us a story of, um, of Russ calling you, but I know that you know, over the years, it's been a lot of rumors about Brad possibly leaving and moving on. So when you found out this news about John, how did you initially find out? Oh, you know, it's crazy. Um, I was laying in bed watching this show that y'all need to watch called The Boys, The Boys. So I'm watching this show and I get a phone call from my mom around like 11, 1130. And uh, she called me and my aunt's on three-way. So you, you got to understand, I'm thinking this is like, okay, what's the deal, mom? What's going on? She was like, you didn't hear? I said, didn't hear what, mom? So, you know, my, my heart started beating fast. But every time she called me about something, that means I'm getting traded. That's been, that's, that's, that's been, the, uh, that's been the ritual back. <laughs> that's been the ritual. Uh, so I'm like, mom, what's the deal? She's like, uh, uh, you know, they traded John. I said, no. And she was like, yeah. So um, usually in those situations, I, I try to like give people time. Uh, I try to, you know, I, I remember when I would get traded and just, you know, you just kind of want some time to just kind of soak it in, whatever the case is, what's the move, get everything up and, and gather your stuff. So that's what I was doing, um, you know, gave it some time. And um, I got a chance to talk to him the other day, man. Uh, just gave him a big hug and told him I love him, man. You know, we North Carolina boys. Uh, 
and uh, that's, you know, every time I see him, I'm proud of him. And P.J. Tucker, you know, everybody that's from North Carolina, Chris, and the list can go on. Uh, you know, J. Rob here, and you know, all of us. So he's family, and uh, I'm happy for him. Um, you know, I would love to play for play with him this year. I was really excited about it, but uh, you know, I always say the next move is the best move, and both guys are going to great places. And um, speaking of the season two, the schedule just was released. I mean, a lot of players who were injured in the past are coming back. And, you know, it's a lot of new lineups um, that are coming across the league. What is a team or what is, um, you know, what is a day that you're looking forward to? You know what's crazy? I don't even looking at the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> I just never have. It's 82 of them things. This year is 72. So, like, I really be finding out, like, Oh, shucks. Like, where we flying to? Let, let me make sure I pack my clothes. <laughs> so, I, I, I'll address the side. I really – I found out we play Philly first. That's the next game, and and that's what I really kind of worry about. Um, you know, the Philly fans have been great. I was there for a year and some change. They've been great, but I'm not going to see them probably until towards the end of the season. So, uh, um, so we're – you know, that's the next game, um, and, and that's really what I, you know, worry about and focus about, um, focus on. So I really, I, you know, I, I started this like back when I first came in the league. It was just 82. It was just too long. <laughs> Thanks, Ish. Yes, man. Troy. Hey, Ish, welcome back for another season, man. Um, I want to ask, uh, last year, uh, Pommy and I, uh, they, on media day last year, they both came into the season talking about uh, it being a development year for uh, the team last year. Um, and it, it's, it's, I guess it's easy to say that the uh, expectations have probably changed a little bit. What did you learn from your experience with the team last year and how you can take from that and, and translate to uh, you know, better results this year? Yeah, last year, you know, let's call it spade a spade. Expectations have grown. Um, we're a year older. All the guys are here a year older. Um, we went through some things last year. Uh, and, and let's let's be honest, like if that was a developmental year, we were a ninth seed, that's not too bad. So we're right there. We got we got some things we gotta tweak, some things we gotta get better at. Um uh obviously, you know, the elephant in the room is, is our defense growing and getting better. Um and then uh, and continue to improve on our offense. Um, like I said, obviously you bring in Russ, the expectations will change and will grow. The expectations are gonna be high anyway with John coming back. So um, those things haven't changed. Uh, you go to the lab individually when you go home and you work and you improve and, and you come back ready. Uh, but we know that for us, now everybody on the outside might not think of an expectations, but you play this league, you play in this league to win games. Um, and that's, that's the key. And that's, that's our goal. That's our goals this year uh, to continue uh, to take those next steps and, and get into the playoffs. Um, I was in Detroit. We were always ninth, eighth. I'm mean, kind of sick of that, y'all. I'm going to just be honest with you. Last year, we were ninth. Um, you're good enough for everybody to respect you, uh, but you're not that good to get into the playoffs. And so we have to break that mold. And, and uh, so we got to, like I said, expectations have to change. And, um, you know, we, we will. We're, we're getting better. And, uh, but, you know, those are things we got to grow on. Thank you, man. Appreciate you, bro. And we'll finish up with Christos. Hello, Aish. Thank you for your time. I would like to ask you, uh, first of all, how close you are from uh, to the playoffs with the Russia division on the on your roster? Yeah, um, I think we're a playoff team. I think we're a playoff team. Um, obviously, we all have to play games. We all have to go out there and play. But I think not only we're a playoff team, we got to look at it a little greater than that. I've always been a kid. Obviously, I've been on a hundred different teams, 11 years in the league. Uh, I guarantee you if anybody would ask anybody uh, if I would have been here this long, I'll keep going on as I am. People would thought I was, you know, they thought it was crazy. Um, so to be honest with you, I think um, we're a playoff team and a strong playoff team. And that's something that we have to think like every single day. I'm a strong believer of uh, whatever you speak, whatever you believe, it will come to fruition. And we have to work that way every single day. And also, as a teammate of uh, Russell Westbrook, what are the aspects that made uh, him so special as a player? 
Oh, man. What makes him special? It's a certain level he goes to. And I, I remember playing against Russ when I – it's a highlight. You know, I, I played for Skip Process. Skip used to always say you don't criticize success, you analyze it. So I remember playing in Philly, and, and Russ had this mask on. So you got to understand, I, I'm, I'm fast. I'm one of the fastest players in the NBA. And this dude hit a gear, like when we were playing against him when I was in Philly, and he just ran by me with the ball. That, to me, is who Russ is. Russ just goes to this another gear when uh, other guys be like, man, I'm tired. And man, I'm, he just goes to another gear, another energy, another juice. And it's just his, his pure will, athletic ability. Uh, we know he can pass the ball. We know he has skill. But he just goes to this next thing with guys like, man, I'm tired. And he's like, no, I ain't tired. I'm going to keep going. And, um, and that's who Russ is. Uh, that's what has made him great in this league. Thank you. Thank you, Ish. Appreciate, Appreciate everybody. Y'all. Day. <laughs> and uh, we will send out information on uh, tomorrow's practice uh, availabilities. Uh, same time tomorrow, 12 to 2, and uh, we'll send out the, who will be available uh, shortly uh, this afternoon. Thanks. Thanks, Scott.